Hello, and welcome to another Morning Manna podcast. My name is Pastor Jeff Glenn, and it's my pleasure and privilege to take you through the Word. We've been in 1 John, and last week we saw, uh, and we actually explored this commandment to love. Jesus' commandment to love is not burdensome, and it's also a mark of those who follow him. And also, our love for one another is not negotiable. It's, as we see here, and this command we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. And so it's a command, obviously, so we must love our brother, so non-negotiable. Now we move into chapter 5, verses 4 through 12, where John is rehearsing, going over this way of life, which is faith in Jesus Christ for those who believe in him. What is the way of life? What does life look like for the follower of Jesus? And so as I read through these verses, listen closely, and and you're going to listen for words like faith and belief, truth, and and receive, because they're quite different from words that, that I think sometimes we get stuck on. Very different from being good, working to be better, or trying to achieve. Sometimes we get caught up in thinking that we need to work to be good in order to go to heaven or, or to please God. But John is clear about the victory that we have is given to us by faith and belief in Jesus' blood. And so we'll read here 4 through 12. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And this is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony that God has given us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life, and he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. And so in, it's very clear in verse 4, it's our faith, not our goodness or efforts, that's what overcomes the world. So there is a place for good works, but it needs to be in its proper place and in the proper order. We see in Ephesians 2.8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So our our saving faith is what brings us into relationship with God. And then in Ephesians 2.10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So believing, having this faith, places us in Christ Jesus, and we're placed in Christ Jesus for good works. And so salvation then works. And then we see that our life following Christ begins with faith faith in Jesus, right? We have to have faith in who he says he is in order to follow him. Then these verses 6 through 12, John addresses the testimonies and the superior witness of God. We see in Deuteronomy 19, 15, "...one witness shall not rise against a man concerning any iniquity or sins that he commits." But by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. So John is saying that in the 6 through 12, that in human terms, we accept the witness, uh, we accept the testimony of two or three witnesses. So we should absolutely receive the witness of God because it has greater authority. And he's saying that in verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. And so it's based on the fact that God cannot lie. So we see that in Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. And in Hebrews 6, 18, 
that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. And then it goes on. So we see that God cannot lie. It's his character and nature that he cannot lie. And so the testimony from God who cannot lie is that the eternal life is given to those who believe in Jesus Christ. And so from the the totality of what we've been reading so far, we see that this means that we believe that we're sinners and that our sin needs repented of and that Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. And we've learned that that propitiation is just a big theological word that means that the atoning sacrifice that appeased God's wrath. God has wrath towards sin, and Jesus took our sin upon him, absorbed God's wrath. And so believing in that leaves no room for our work to salvation, only from salvation. It's all on Jesus. It's all on Jesus. And I'm so grateful for that, and I hope you are too, and have a great rest of your week.